Hi, Keith here and welcome to the second video on our solar and battery installation and how it's performed in October 22. And before we go into the results, just a thank you to you all for the responses to the first video. I'm glad the information has been useful to you and some great questions were raised in the comments. And talking of those questions, um, we got asked about whether we were on a three phase supply. Uh, so we're not actually on a three phase installation. So that does mean that in the event of a power cut, we can't power the house independently which isn't an issue for us at the moment as we rarely get power cuts and when they do they're for a matter of minutes. If the UK does implement rolling blackouts this winter in the event of gas shortages then that may potentially become an issue but that appears less likely if the report from the National Grid today on the 11th of November uh, bears out. There are also some questions around how we can better utilise the battery installation. Uh, this is something I'm actively looking into at the moment as I put in the comments, there isn't much of a manual around the solid inverter, but I have found some videos on YouTube that outline how I could charge the battery from the grid. So I'll let you know how that goes. Um, one issue I do have is I don't have an off-peak tariff. Uh, my provider, Octopus, is Octopus Go, but that's only available to those that have an electric vehicle, which I don't have and I'm not likely to have for a while yet. Um, Octopus Agile, that may be an option. I just need to dig into the numbers. So, uh, on uh, with today's video. Uh, firstly, a quick recap. So, while the rear of our house faces south, our roof pitches are facing east and west, and the ridge of our house runs from north to south. So, we don't have a pitch that faces south, which is most people's expectation of the most optimal installation. Uh, and while our panels do face east and west, they're not particularly shaded. Uh, the east facing one's only shaded first thing in the morning until the sun is above the roof line of our neighbours and the west facing pitch is not really shaded at all. And in terms of where we're positioned, uh, apart from our neighbours to the east, uh, the west side of our house doesn't really have anything to block the view of the sun and all the houses around us are a similar build, similar height and spaced apart. So this is the installation that we had in late August and early September of this year. So again, just as a reminder, we've got 16 solar panels, uh, all 385 watt panels, and we have nine of them facing the west, and we've got seven facing the east. So our total install capacity is 6.16 kilowatt hours. And then we have five pylon batteries in the loft with a total storage capacity of 12 kilowatts hours and we have the Solis 5G inverter, which you can see there as well. And this is the installation in diagram form as well. And finally, um, we're just slightly off a perfect north-south alignment, um, but you can see with the track of the sun throughout the year, as shown in this representation of sunrise and sunset positions each month, and the length of the solar day, uh, we should get a consistent solar generation through the year which is obviously only limited by weather uh, and the seasons in terms of both the length of the solar day and obviously the strength of the sun uh, during the autumn and winter. So October 2022 was our first full month of having a solar implementation so how did the system fare? Uh, we saw some decent results just from the last three weeks of September last year. So how does October compare? So as a reminder, uh, if we take uh, the midpoint uh, in October, October the 15th, so if we take the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of east-southeast at around 7.20 in the morning. And it sets in the west-southwest direction at around 18.04 in the evening. So compared to the 15th of September, there's actually two hours less daylight near enough. Uh, and as we move into autumn and the Northern Hemisphere then faces away from the sun, then the sun is actually 11 degrees lower in the sky at noon uh, at 30 degrees as opposed to 41 degrees in September. So this is our solar generation for the month. Uh, you can see a steady downward trend in solar generation, obviously we're, as we're getting deeper into autumn. 
But for our best day on the 6th of October, uh, we generated 18.3 kilowatt hours. And overall, for 18 of the 31 days of the month, we generated over 10 kilowatt hours per day. Our worst day was the 30th of October, uh, and actually that's our lowest day of generation since installation. We only generated around 2.1 kilowatt hours. And the poor performance that was seen on the 30th of October can be clearly explained uh, by this view here. Uh, so completely weather related, uh, as you can see on this chart from our Netatmo rain meter for that day, where it pretty much rained from 6 a.m. through to 1 p.m. So that's the reason for such low generation on that day. But if we go back to the best day uh, in terms of solar generation on the 6th of October, uh, this is the dashboard from Solis Cloud. So this is the portal uh, for my inverter and shows our generation consumption for the day. In terms of generation, you can see a clearly defined generation curve. It's pretty consistent generation throughout the day. And as we mentioned, around 18.3 kilowatt hours of electricity was generated. Of that 18.3 kilowatts, we used 8.3 kilowatt hours. We sent 9 kilowatt hours to the battery and 1 kilowatt hours exported to the grid. Uh, we also used uh, 9 kilowatt hours from the battery uh, along with another 6 kilowatt hours that we imported from the grid. So this means in total our house used on the 6th of October 23.3 kilowatt hours of electricity and of that 74% of that usage was from our solar generation either from the panels directly or from the battery and that was 17.3 kilowatt hours in total. We didn't get a payment for the one kilowatt export to the grid uh, and that's solely because our switch to Octopus Outgoing Agile didn't actually complete until the 27th of October. And here is our electricity usage split uh, between grid import, battery usage and solar usage. And again, in case you can't see uh, the colours clearly uh, or the, the key, uh, the blue is grid import, the orange is battery usage and the yellow is solar generation usage. So for the 3rd of October, that was our best day where we had virtually 100% consumption of our own generated power. Um, we didn't utilise much from the grid at all. And again, uh, going back into Solis Cloud, uh, just to show uh, the best day uh, for the split between grid and self-generation in more detail. So on the 3rd of October, uh, we generated 12.1 kilowatt hours, of which seven kilowatt hours went to the battery and one kilowatt hours exported to the grid. Uh, as mentioned, our total consumption in the house was 17.1 kilowatt hours, and that was 4.1 kilowatt hours directly from the panels and 13 kilowatt hours from the battery, uh, which is probably quite likely to have also used some power stored from the previous day's generation. And finally, uh, this chart here shows the split between uh, solar generation usage in terms of panel and battery and grid import. Uh, and for the month, 55% of our house usage was on generated power, which isn't actually that different from what we saw in September, apart from the fact that we only had three weeks of generation for September. So a, a downward trend, as you can certainly see in the graph, again, as we're getting deeper into autumn, but not an awful lot different uh, from what we saw from our first few weeks uh, last month. So overall, how did we do? Um, as you saw, 55% uh, of our electricity consumption in, in October was through our solar generation, either directly from the panels or from the battery itself. Overall, we generated 351 kilowatt hours of electricity of which the house used 343 kilowatt hours. Again, this is virtually identical uh, to September, uh, but again, for October, that's over the full month, uh, so four weeks instead of the three that we had the installation up and running for in September. Uh, the grid import cost for October 
was 111 pounds and 66 pence for an additional 285 kilowatt hours. So taking that into account, our generated usage, uh, if we hadn't had solar panels, would have cost an additional 120 pounds and 19 pence on top of that 111 pounds. So our total cost, if we hadn't had solar generation and battery usage, would have been 231 pounds and 85 pence based on the total house usage of both solar and import. So in terms of costs so far, uh, this chart shows the electricity costs for the year to date um, with the solar generation detail included. So you can see for the first eight months of the year, we are solely relying on grid import, obviously because our solar panel and battery installation didn't take place until late August and early September. Um, but you can see that the grid costs fluctuate because of a couple of things. Firstly, for January and February, we were still on fixed rate, so the costs were lower. We then moved on to the standard tariff from Octopus, but we also elected to change our payments to pay in for the energy we used rather than a fixed monthly cost. Uh, and that's on the basis that we knew the prices were going up. And as our gas usage is low during the spring and summer and autumn, it made sense not to be tied into a higher monthly cost. The price increases in April have put the costs up again and the introduction of our solar installation in September has obviously started to bring our monthly costs down. Um, do note as well that we did have different unit prices in September and October. So September uh, was nearly 28 pence per unit whereas in October uh, as part of the overall national increase that's gone up to 35 pence per unit. Uh, I'm excluding the standard charge, or the standing charge here rather, as that's already factored into the daily cost of electricity, because even if I don't use anything, uh, I'm still charged 37 pence per day. Um, yeah, our usage also increased, as you can see, in September and October. Uh, that can be explained in part by some uh, of our friends, uh, they had their kitchen replaced, so they needed to make use of our washing machine, so that's uh, used a, a little bit more electricity than normal, uh, just in terms of uh, increased usage uh, for those few weeks. Grid cost for the year is £1,301.12, but it would have been £1,516.84 if we hadn't had the solar in place, based on our total usage. And our total solar generation to date uh, has been 703 kilowatt hours, and of that we've used 686 kilo kilowatt hours. So our combined savings, both from that usage multiplied by the unit costs, excluding the standing charge, as that's already a given, uh, was 215 pounds and 72 pence. So that's uh, how we performed in October. Um, so. What's next on the channel? Uh, next month I'll give an update on how the systems performed in November. Uh, spoiler alert, the first week was pretty much constant rain, so the numbers are already significantly down on the same week in October. Um, but in addition to that, what else would you like to see? Um, would you like to understand the analysis that I did uh, before agreeing to the install and some of the tools that I used to guesstimate potential performance? Um, there have also been questions in the comments about what I'd consider doing for heating because at the moment we're still gas powered um, so maybe that's of interest in terms of what my options are there but as always let me know in the comments below and if you found this video useful please do like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks.